let's have a little fun here. Uh, I've been I've been thinking about arms lately because I like I like arms. Um, it has some issues. Definitely has rage economy issues, but realistically, I, I thought about it and I'm like, where does arms actually fit in? Right? Where does arms provide enough value in the entire patch currently where you say, you know what? I'm thinking arms, right? So let's just make it in paint, right? Excuse me. My idea is going to be there will be a raid section and a Mythic Plus section. And the Mythic Plus section will have Fortified Tyrannical. And the raid section will be, well, each boss in the raid, right? And of all of those sections, where does ARMS fit in? Because what does ARMS have over Fury, right? Because obviously something will always be better. Sometimes ARMS will be better. Sometimes Fury will be better. Uh, but what legitimately does ARMS have over Fury? specifically execute damage like raw execute damage arms still has the highest execute damage in the game and mass aoe it can only have one or the other it can't have both there's nothing in the middle for arms but it does have those two niches over fury specifically those so let's go over to handy dandy paint right and we will do because there is how many dungeons in the set how many dungos? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven dungeons, and then there, I believe, is nine bosses. One, two, three, five, six, seven. yeah, nine. So this is how we'll do it. We'll go over here. We'll go. Oh my god, that's the worst R ever. R A I. Dude, people do art in paint with with a mouse. Jesus. Do right here. And then we'll do M plus, right? And then I guess we'll make. You know, we'll do this. We'll do this. Uh, this will be arms. It'll be arms. And then this will be Fury. All right. And here will be our raid. And then here will be our Mythic Plus. So we need nine sections. One. Two. Three. Why am I, why am I doing this? Four. Five. Six. Seven. Man, I have just the fucking ratio here is terrible. Seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. Ah, shit. Which is the big one? We'll do here. We'll go nine, right? Nine right here. Nine. Then we'll do one, two, three, four, five. Right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually, because of that, we can take this thing here. Wait, what the fuck? It's it's showing the transparent background instead of just a base white background. Uh, fill that in. Okay. All right. So then we'll have our handy dandy. Oh God, what? No, not white. We will have our handy dandy line here, and this will be fort. Or fort, and this will be tyrannical. And this will also be arms, and this will be the fury side. All right. Uh, and then what bosses do we have? Right? What bosses do we have? We have Narut, we have Agira. If we go left side, we got Volacross, Larodar. Council, Call of Duty, Council of Dreams, COD. Uh, we have Naimu, Smolderon, Tendril, those name will be Ten, and uh, Fireac. Fear, for Fearlath, for the legendary I don't have. So where 
does arms fit in, right? Where does arms fit in? First, we'll go with the raid. We'll go through raid. Narut, very fury sighted. Agira, very fury sighted. Volacross, fury sighted. Laradar, fury sighted. Council of Dreams, the only boss in the raid nobody likes and nobody cares about. I got messaged. Uh, arms sighted. Naimu, fury sighted. Uh, Smolderon, fury sighted. Tendril, fury sighted. And Farak, fury sighted. Now let's go on to. I guess we should. You know, I need to make a new, another split here because that's Fort and Tyrannical. I forgot to put the dungeons. So we'll put the dungeons here, right? This is a terrible fucking graph. All right. This is a terrible graph. Uh, this will be Waycrest Manor. Uh, this will be a tall Dazar. Dark Heart. F at the DHT. Uh, we have Throne of the Tides. Tater Tots. We have... We know. I have to shift all of this down one. Actually not. I have the technology. Cut. Action. Yeah, sure. Check this shit out. I'll take this section. And I'm just going to move it down one. Okay. You know, let's, let's do this not terrible this time. Mm. Come on. We can get this. I believe in me, kind of. Move it down one. Fill this back in. Make our new line. No, nope. big enough. Uh, Throne of the Tides. Breakers Tall, DHT, Throne of the Tides. Um, Ever Bloom. Ever Bloom. Then there is. I'm missing both Dawns and Black Recold. Okay. So. B R H, and then you know what? We're gonna have to make one more line. This is terrible. Oh god, this is awful. And it's gonna go Dawn of the Infinite, Dawn Fall, and then Dawn Murazon. Right here we have so Waycrest Manor fortified. There's a decent amount of AOE. But most of this is bosses. There is two target bosses. You do get value on Lord and Lady Waycrest from having arms, right? Arms does get value from Lord and Lady Waycrest because of the healing debuff. You technically do 75% of that boss's health uh, by just giving it Mortal Strike. Um, you are able to immune the... Uh, you are able to immune the... Soul spikes uh, as arms if you blade storm, and there is technically two target cleave on the. If you don't get soul spike, that's two target. There is multi target on the gluttonous Lord and Lady Waycrest have uh, two target there and MS value, and then the last boss also technically has two target if you're killing it, right? So there is a decent amount of value here. Um, and it is it is pretty contentious, I'd have to say, right? with with what is better for what. But for ah. Uh, there's value there, but one of the, I think for fortified, for fortified, I feel like arms has enough value. But for tyrannical, you have to go for fury. Uh, one of the main reasoning is the tree boss because of the soul spikes. You have to pre spin the soul spike. 
So if you don't get targeted, you simply wasted a cooldown. You also have less single target damage on the boss. You are not able to use a defensive while stunned if you do get stunned, like you can with Fury and Enrage Regeneration on that boss. Um, as well as having more single, better single target and uh, multi-target cleave for the third boss, or for the Gluttonous. Um, you have more self-healing and durability for the Witches. You do still have multi-cleave on the last boss, but it's primarily about just being tankier, which Fury has a lot more health. So I think Fury takes the win on Lakegrass Manor. Uh, for a tall Dazar, it is certainly Fury all the way for both. Because the pack sizes simply aren't large enough, the only way you're getting mass AoE value is on these swords, and even then you are losing a significant amount of value of single target damage or multi-target damage on the last boss. You're losing out on single target on Razan. You're losing out on single target on the totem boss uh, for Dark Heart Thicket. The only mass AoE in the entire dungeon is the first pull and then the flowers um, that you will kite and kill. Uh, one of the problems being that if you pull a lot of the flowers with the... Um, if you pull a lot of the flowers with the keepers that heal them... The main problem is your mass AoE doesn't matter because all that damage is being healed up and then you're not getting priority damage on the keepers and it makes you less tanky for the bosses and most of the packs that you're fighting in there are not large enough to warrant going full AoE versus Fury even on Fortified so this is going to be a Fury Fort I ran. All right. Uh, for Throne of the Tides, once again, durability is key, especially when you are uh, doing a lot of damage in there and you need durability against the bosses, even if you're doing um, fortified keys uh, for the first and third boss. Um, there is two instances of mass AoE, which is the pull and then the hallway. Arms probably has the advantage in damage there, just because of all the little adds um, that do need to die. However, you are then lacking priority damage, you're lacking tankiness, you lose a decent amount of damage going shockwave as arms, and the pull sizes are generally not large enough that it warrants bringing it. Not to mention if you do um, run mass AoE in the hallway, leading up to the last boss, you're probably more than likely going to kill your teammates uh, simply because you're popping all of those things by just doing the only thing your class can do because you're certainly not building single target in a dungeon. So because of that, for all of those reasons and just generally being tanky on everything else, it is Fury all the way on both Tyrant and Fort. For Everbloom specifically, because there is so much trash in Everbloom, like legitimately so much trash in Everbloom. Oh, that is the weirdest, weirdest EB I think I've done. E. I think Fortified Everbloom is an arms key. Just based on the amount of mass AoE that you're doing, the amount of mass AoE you have to do. Uh, just to time that dungeon, the timer is decently tight. You get two target cleave value technically on the first boss. You get two target cleave value significantly on the second boss. You get your protectors. For fortified specifically, using your cooldowns and rotation, you can actually stay safe enough with defensive stance on the third boss of Archmage Soul with the salvo. And then you also get two target cleave on the last boss with Yalnu. And if everything is going correctly and everything is going fine, then you shouldn't actually need to be Fury uh, specifically for that key. Um, and to time it, especially on Fortified, you need mass AoE. Other classes are already better at this than we are. Um, something like a Demon Hunter is just going to do more AoE damage than arms um, anyway, while also not 
also being able to spec single target. So that's just a key we're probably going to have to do a level or two lower than what a meta comp is going to be, just for lack of overall damage. Um, and then for Tyran, there is a case for arms here. There's a small case for arms here, but the actual problem is one of the reasons why Fury is so good is because you need to be tanky. You just have to be tanky. These bosses do so, so much damage. The second boss isn't as dangerous as arms, just because, yeah, it's two target, but you're also being able to spell reflect any danger moments. Uh, so the second boss really isn't the issue. The issue is the third boss where you're just after using your die by the sword. Um, you can technically run ignore pain, but even if you get honestly, even if you're running arms with ignore pain uh, through on a high fortified key or even a really or a high like tyrannical key. If you get targeted four times by the Cinderbolt Salvo, uh, you can use everything on the first one, but even through defensive stance and ignore pain, I'm pretty sure you just straight up die uh, to the second one if you get unlucky. And because Mythic Plus is all about consistency, um, the on Tyran, I don't see a reason why you would bring arms you also bring priority damage, especially to the Abominations or the Caster Mobs uh, in these dungeons as Fury instead of just pure AoE, which a lot of the other uh, classes would bring. Um, but things like Rogues can prioritize, Demon Hunters can prioritize, Warlocks are still a little more mass AoE, but they still can do uh, focus on single target damage. Mages just ignite off of the A-Bomb, as an example. Um, there's nothing that we're really able to do better than the other classes. The only thing that we have going for us is quite literally how unkillable we are. Um, but that really only equates to Fury, because I think you just simply run out of defensives as arms, and then you don't have the passive damage reduction that War Paint gives you, nor do you have the amount of self-healing or raw stamina that you would have with uh, effective health with just defensive stance which means Fury is way better here. For Black Rook Hold, for Black Rook Hold, Arms has some interesting value. There is a significant amount of mass AoE in this dungeon, actually. The first pole is big, then you do a boss. The second pole is big with the spiders. The third pole is generally big with the two-pack into the, the guy standing there. Then you have a five-pack. Then you have, like, another... Then you have five-pack, you have a four-pack, you have a four-pack. Um, so you're not, like, doing as crazy there. But even after the second boss, you have mass AoE in the hallway. You have mass AoE to the third boss. And you can just have mass AoE to the last boss as well. On Fortified, honestly, this feels more like an arms key for sure. You also have a decent amount of value on Smash Bite. Uh, for, because with Smash Bite, you can actually parry the Hateful Charge. Um, so if you're in a kind of a sticky situation, you can eat the charge and then still have the DR up for the stomp afterwards. So I think on just needing the raw amount of, uh, if you want the raw amount of overall, I think ARMS has the potential to have the highest key level for Fortified. The main issue is that the timer is actually fairly lenient uh, for Black Rook Hold, um, unless you're running on like Sanguine, which it makes it way worse. But even then, once you get to a high enough key, it becomes very difficult. And it's just, are you tanky enough to live the guy shadow bolting you? If you don't have enough health, you might just die. Uh, so. But I do think arms provides enough value uh, for that. The hard part is talking about this fight. Uh, Black Rook Hold on Tyrannical, right? Because obviously bosses are doing way more damage. Yeah, you do gain value from being able to parry Smash Bites thing, but that's nothing a rogue couldn't do better with Evasion as Outlaw. Um, we will be tanky enough to essentially live almost everything, right? That's one of the biggest difficulties is just living. We have Enrage Regeneration if we get the Stinging Swarm on us. Um, but arms will have a lot less health 
and especially on tyrannical uh, the dungeon mobs don't matter as much it's really hard honestly it's really hard because there is a case where you might say mm, maybe arms just because of how much mass aoe there is uh for like potential overall damage but on tyrannical the problem has always 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 been living there are so many one shots there's so much damage going out that I think it has to go to Fury. Um, there's the timer is simply too lenient, and the amount of mass AOE required is not as significantly important compared to Fortified. Uh, so Tyran goes to Fury for sure. Now we have Dawn of the Infinite Fall, Galacron's Fall. Um. With Galacron's Fall, Arms is off the table no matter what. Because the timer is very lenient. All you have to do is live. And the problem is that the last boss has no execute value whatsoever. Absolutely none. And you need to do Burst Window on a mob that has over 90% health and the best dungeon uh, set up generally for arms is the blade storm build you're going to provide very little value to that shield uh, and that shield is basically the only thing in the dungeon that matters that and being tanky enough to deal with second and third boss and who's tanky who has burst who can't die fury ward hands down fury is going to be the end all be all in these keys right and now we have dawn of the infinite murazon's rise this dungeon is very weird um, because there is not a lot of trash. Most of the trash you're pulling um, one by one as you're trying to cross the room in the sand room, for example. There is a small amount of mass AoE in the first room, but are you really going to bring arms just to mass AoE the uh, first room, first pull? Because you're not going to be mass AoEing on the Maiden. Um, mass AoEing when the guy's putting shields down when he's walking around isn't really going to do much either. You're going to be, you will be a little tankier because you're probably going to be taking Shockwave just for extra um, kicks in there. But Murazon's Rise is a very weird dungeon where even though it has trash, it is primarily single target. Because if we look at the dungeon, right? Yeah, we have AoE, AoE here. Single target, two mobs. Two mobs. You're basically like single pulling, chain pulling all through this. Most people skip these. Single target, skip these. Skip these. Single target, three mobs. Boss, single target. Skip these. Three target. Boss, two target. Most of If at max, two target. Um, you do technically get a little more execute value. Uh, but once again, the boss hits really hard, and you kind of just need to live. And if for some reason, let's say you get aggro on one of these infinite keepers, uh, their infinite blast does a lot of damage. Like, a lot, a lot. And you can reflect it, and it does a lot back to them. But realistically, this boss is, or that dungeon is deceptively single target focused. So I think Fury very much wins out there. Fury also provides, even on Fortified, provides value to you on the priority damage for the maguses and simply being a live lord being tanky is very valuable uh, for the bosses as well and this is why arms is very unfavorable and nobody really plays it um in any high content because of this little shithole graph that you see in front of you here because Council of Dreams, who cares? But yeah, Arms is a little better because two target, I guess. Waycrest Manor, I put Arms, but even that's very debate. Excuse me, but even that is extremely debatable considering the amount of single target that you want for multiple bosses. Everbloom, I put Arms just for pure mass AoE, and once you get to a high enough key, the bosses are still doing enough damage where you want to be tanky. So even then, that's debatable. And once again. Same thing Blackwork Hold. 
there is potential just for mass AOE and overall between the bats and the um, the bats don't matter, but between the hallway with all the little spinny boys, first pole's a decent size, um, the spiders, but you can already see I'm stretching to gain a lot of value here uh, for arms. And one of the things that actually incidentally makes a decent amount of this kind of null uh, for Everbloom and Black Recold specifically is the legendary. Our, our big orange lollipop, right? Our big orange lollipop. Firax in there or something. He's angry, right? Big orange lollipop. And the reason is, uh, when you hit things with the legendary, it puts a dot on them. One of the reasons why Fury sucks is because its mass AoE has no value outside of five targets. But then the legendary just gives us mass value outside of five targets. And as us an active that can split damage. Or something that's interesting that you can do is let's say you're doing an Everbloom pull, right? You're doing an Everbloom pull. You Whirlwind, you put the dot a uh, fire, uh, fire Lath on all of the flowers you wait till the flowers are almost dead and then you activate it because the damage from the activation is split on the enemies it is hitting you are essentially funneling all of the marks that you absorbed from the flowers that just died mid just died before the channel into those couple mobs uh the, like the casters and stuff that you're actually trying to kill so one of theory's biggest weaknesses which is mass aoe Firelath, shears up quite a bit uh the thing does a very large amount of damage in aoe uh, deceptively so um and it supports the five target cleave that fury is stuck at so once you get the legendary even these arms keys even become a little more suspect the only thing that i do the only key the only key that I think is legitimately might be the best arms key is Everbloom. Everbloom fortified. But other than that, the only value you have in raid is Council of Dreams. And you know, we're going to draw a stinky poo poo here because you know what? Who, who cares? Who cares about Council of Dreams? Oh, we got stink lines coming off of it. This fight sucks. Um, and that's why arms isn't good. Because the only niches arms have, like I said before, is mass AoE and full single target execute. And every single fight in this raid, execute doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is overall throughput. The entire raid. There is no execute boss in this entire raid. Because even, let's say, a fight like, uh, a fight like Tendril, right? Everything is scripted on time. So it doesn't matter if you're good at execute or not. The only reason why you might bring like, we have an assassination rogue uh, there because we have like, we're running like three rogues on that fight um, is because they're just piping the boss, but they still do some AOE. They do fine damage. Um, but arms just doesn't fit anywhere, man. It just doesn't fit anywhere. Uh, I know this graph is big scuffed, and I kind of just wanted to talk about it, but I, I've just had a lot of difficulty really trying to piece together why ARMS just isn't that good. Um, and I think damage buffs could go a long way, um, but one thing ARMS really needs is it needs something like War Paint, because ARMS has an entire two-hander uh, less of stamina arms can go endurance training and shockwave at the cost of a lot of da uh, aoe damage right but it's just not a good arms patch man it's just not a good arms patch and even if they buff it the only real value it has still is mass aoe that's the only value it has um that Fucker. Guy's got the legendary. I see it on his back. I saw it on his back. You son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. I'll get it eventually, man. I'll get it one day. But. 
I just felt like talking about this shit and making a stupid graph. So, uh, enjoy my dumb graph. I talked about ARMS. I wish it was better. But the current design, from almost every standpoint, is making it, by design, not that great. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.